George Digweed has just become world sporting champion for the 17th time. He is one of the only sportsmen to have won world championships across four decades. But he doesn't spend his whole life touring the globe being the one to beat. He also has his shoots to run and grounds to manage, whether it's pigeon, rabbit or, like tonight, fox control. The crops are starting to come in. Rapeseed and wheat are all being harvested and without the cover it's a perfect opportunity to start hitting foxes, young and old. Tonight, George and his trusty lamp man, Willie, are finally getting the chance to get on top of Charlie. We've got a few fox problems at the chute. Um, we've been losing one or two pheasants and an odd duck or two to foxes. Um, so basically we've been waiting for a lot of the corn to come off, which has only just come off. Everything's about two or three weeks late this year and the moisture content in the rape is still pretty high. So they've, you know, they, whereas the rape would normally be off, they've, uh, They've been hanging back. Um, a lot of it's come off now, although certain bits of it still haven't been. Um, but we're going to go out, do the rape stubbles. There's a bit of winter linseed being cut and a little bit of wheat. So um, we're just going to have a look, look round and see if we can pick up, you know, any odd foxes that are about. The I'm using tonight is a Seiko 223 Schmidt and Bender 8 to 56 scope, um, and. Uh, I get a very good friend of mine to hand load the 223 ammunition, um, which is fairly hot. Um, but the problem is at this time of year, the problem that I find with a 223, um, and probably I'd be better off using a, a 243s, uh, because it's so fast and it's quite a light load, uh, and we're shooting quite a lot on rape stubble, um, the bullets tend to just break up and whilst you've got an absolute dead cert fox, if it touches a bit of rape stubble in between, um, it's not a dead cert fox. So uh, I think perhaps a slightly heavier bullet, slightly heavier calibre at this time of year might work, uh, might work slightly better. And then when everything comes off, um, when everything comes off and, you know, you haven't got such long stalks, you know, they cut the rape sort of that high. Well, you know, a fox cub in a rape, stalk that high you know you've, it's almost like trying to guide, guide it through a wire mesh fence so um, sometimes I think that um, we'd be better off shooting a slightly heavier calibre but it's a tried and trusted tool and I like to stick with it. We head off through the farm close to George's pheasant pens Willie choosing a red filter because less is more. It's a wild animal and the idea is to to try not to spook it as as much as you can, um, so keep the lamp off it all the time, uh, and keep it in the periphery so that you can just about see it, but you're not blinding it with the full beam of the light all the time. Um, and then if George hasn't got enough light to shoot when when it's within range, he'll just say okay, and I'll give it a bit more. Um, but all the time we can avoid putting it full on it, the better really. After 20 minutes, we see our first set of eyes. But the barks tell us he's not alone. OK. George hits the one to the front, repositions and sends a second shot to the right. The dream team are working well. At this time of year, George and Willie will be out three times a week and in the past have taken out 20 foxes in a single night. Well, we came into the field and there was a... Uh, Willie picked up a set of eyes at the far end of the field. And we turn, I turned and faced, the, faced the, you know, where the fox was coming from and had a squeak and it ran up. In fact, if you come over here, it ran up. There's a tram line here. The rape's cut fairly high. So as you can see, there's like a run goes up through the middle of the field. Uh, it came running right up the tram line to us. And then because we were sort of slightly off at an angle, it came just off at an angle and it was just starting to, you know, think, is there anything, uh, is this right? And uh, so I decided I'd shoot it. I shot that one at about 120 yards. And whilst Willie was lamping that, he could hear another one running through the rape stubble where I was squeaking out on the right hand side and I've shot another one out here, just out here to the right, which we'll go and find. You 
you can see how high they've cut the rapes though. You can't get a good idea of where it is. I would suggest it's up one of these tram lines somewhere. Where were we, Willie? Over there. I would suggest it's up this tram line here somewhere. There we go. Didn't like that. And George knows he's protecting his expensive birds oh, and these days oh, young it's, children. It's a, so, as I should think it's out the same litter as a dog fox, that one, as opposed to a vixen. Just think of how many children's lives we're saving by doing this. <laughs> I see you grinning at me with that. <laughs> Is that how you feel these days? What? Saving people's lives. Saving children's lives. I mean, these, these foxes are man-eaters now, aren't they? We're covering three bits of ground tonight, and although it's late, there's the drain of the combines working hard all around us. We stop a few times after Willie's beam hits else, a potential yeah. target. Then George chooses a higher position and starts making a right racket. On a winter's night when it's frosty and it's echoing for miles, you can sit here and shoot five or six foxes from the same place because they're coming from so far. Well, he just had one flash round. We'll go down to Shepherds. I'm bored of this now. I want to shoot something. The polystyrene on glass travels across the valley. After 10 minutes, we prepare to move, but Willie spots another. Is it? Can you see that? Put a light rod on it, will you? Can you see it? See it? The best shot in the world finds his target. It's another young one. Dog fox, uh, three quarters grown cub. Quite a long way, it was about 220 yards when I shot that. It's a uh, right spot again. The glass work then? Pardon? The glass work? Yeah, it does, yeah. It just shows you how to, it must have come from a long way because we were squeaking for what, 10 minutes? So before that came. In fact, we were just about to pack up and move on, so. It was a worthwhile effort. It's our last port of call and it's about 1.30 a.m. and starting to get cool. It's a smaller area, but George wants to finish on a high. We stop and he gets his chance with number four. It's the closest shot of the night, but it doesn't matter. The numbers have to be hit hard and if you want anyone sorting the pests on your land, it's George and Willie, of course. It's four less, but you're never gonna you're never gonna fill the void. They come from everywhere, so I know there's more out there and, and we're probably you know, for prime time we're probably a week and a half too early because you know, although we've covered a lot of ground tonight, we would have covered twice as much ground in the same time had all the crops been off and we've been able to cover more ground with the light. But uh, you know, all the time we can keep chipping away and shooting fours and fives. You know, if you go 20 times, that's nearly a hundred. So, uh, you know, you're never going to shoot the last one. Um, and there's, it's a big year for foxes this year. There's a lot of people shooting a lot of foxes. So, um, you know, as long as we keep doing our bit and they're not having too much trouble with the birds and uh, then I'm happy.